Welcome to the tour of the new Station 16 in the Turner District of Kansas City, Kansas. You're going to see the old footage from Station 16 and Station 17 who were combined into this station. Those crews went from small stations as you see to a nice new station that's big enough to accommodate them with the modern amenities for the fire service. So I hope you enjoy this tour and let's get into it. All right, I'm gonna show you the kitchen and the, the bubble room as I call it, but it's the watch room. So let's go in. In here is our watch room. We got the computers to do our reports and uh, that's pretty much it, it's kind of a boring room. But anyway, we'll go into the front foyer area where the public, we can greet the public. There's a public restroom up there we can let them use. And here's our kitchen area. So with as many people that is housed here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 recliners. Here's the kitchen. As you can see with the logo here, Turner Bears. So it's the Turner District of Kansas City, Kansas. Each shift has their own locker to store their stuff and then there's a community locker. Each shift has their own refrigerator and then there's their community refrigerator. Nice big island here for as many people that are stationed here. Um, we'll step outside and show you the patio. Out here we have the patio where they have their grills where they can cook. They can sit out, out here in the warmer months if they want. Nice little area. We have our dry erase boards where we can write information that needs to be covered for the shifts. You're gonna like this area. The workout room. Nice, nice, nice area. It's glad, and some of these stations we have to do our own stuff, so uh, nice area for this new station. All right, we're gonna go back to the bedrooms and the bathrooms. So this goes out to the bay. You can come into the bedroom area and the restroom area. We have another type of office computer room if need be, or let's, let's show them what's on the wall there. The lactation room. Laundry, show you one of the bathrooms here. They're all pretty similar. Got one of the bedrooms there. This one here is pretty similar, but here's where I'm at today on overtime when I'm filming this. Nice big office space, recliner. All right, pretty much the same there for the other captains at this station. And then we, where's the chief's room, down here? Mm-hmm, All right, down here we have battalion chief's room because they're assigned here at this new station now. Pretty much the same as the captain's bedroom. Just another bedroom, nothing special. More bedrooms on this side and then we have the bathrooms on this side. Pretty much the same as you saw earlier. Storage closet for supplies. Happy nuts. <laughs> Lotion to powder, I like it. Another bedroom, engineering room. All right, we'll show you the stuff on this side of the station. All right, we're gonna go up to the mezzanine and show you what's up here. So, as you can see, it's another sitting area. Got some workout punching bag over there. Um, and you can see down to the rigs from up here. Got a TV up here. But yeah, if all the rigs were here right now, you'd see all of them, but one of them's at the store and the battalion chief is out and the ambulance is out. So this is the mezzanine, nice area for them to sit and relax besides in the other area you saw previously. 
So we have more workout stuff here. They can spread this out and do some leg work, whatever they need to do. We have our hazardous storage bins, gas, diesel, right there. So, and here's where we store our gear. Open, let it ventilate. Cancer is prevalent in the firefighter service. It sticks on our gear, sticks on our skin, so we need to decon the best we can, and that allows us to help do that. All right, and here is an important part we just talked about with the cancer, is the extraction machine helps get the carbons out of our gear. And then we can hang them on this and start it up and let it it'll blow dry, everything dry for us in a quicker. We do have two sets of gear now, so that's a good thing for us to swap out while it's cleaning. Restroom there. In here. Ice machine, fill up our coolers in case we have a house fire. Uh, this is our air machine, fill up our air bottles here. So it's nice that you guys have one. Station 12, I don't, as the captain there. Sprinkler room, don't need to see that. EMS closet for storage for EMS supplies and stuff like that. And I guess they have their mascot here. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, Arturo had his key card. He's behind the camera helping me. So as you can see, the supplies, and extra storage for whatever that's for. All right, so I'm gonna show you now pumper 16 at this station. So you can see the inside of it. I, I haven't done that at, on these tours in the past, so I'll show you the rig. All right, here's the driver section. But look, look that, protecting Turner since 1967. Here's the pump panel. And yes, we're gonna wash this rig later today. Here's the pump panel. All right, so captain seat, that's my role. Driver's seat, Arturo's sitting in that. So just pan around, show him the inside, Arturo. We'll, we'll show you a better angle back there, but we have our tablet here that gives us the information for the calls. Uh, we can also do our medical reports on there. Radio system, blah, 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 kind of boring in here, but lights. Anyway, let's go look at the back. All right, so there's three firefighters assigned each day on this rig. And here's where one of them sits back here. So there's room for six. All right, I'm gonna show you what's inside. So it'll be the driver's area for the extra hose. Anything he would need. You have the spanner wrenches in there. Extra bottle, axe, halligan. So most of our rigs are set up the same way. I'll show you the other side here shortly. All right, here's the back of the rig. Shovels, hydrant wrench, kind of a hydrant bag. We got spag stuff for kitty litter, whatever you want to call it, for car X, oil, and any type of uh, fluids out there. So medical section, our monitor, O2 bag, suction, drugs or everything are in there. I think, the, I think the truck company's coming back, so we'll get them pulling in here shortly. But anyway, here's the axes. In here, extra air bottles where we can switch out when we're on a house fire. All right, here's the truck company. It has truck one on there, but it's truck 17. They're just using their own. So here, they brought the food back. This is where we got to store it. So that's just the way it happens. Evan, you got anything to say? Hopefully to appear some <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have our Plymo vent system here, which gets the exhaust out from the rigs. 
I'm gonna leave it on because it's going right now from the truck coming back. High rise, extra tools. So for the people who are wondering what th these are when you, if you happen to see us on a scene, it's called a pike pole. So it allows us to get through the ceiling, pull the ceiling down and see fire above us. All right, introduce yourself, Arturo. How are you guys doing? This is Arturo Mora with Kansas City, Kansas Fire. So I've been on the streets for five years, but it was something with me that our department offers is I started off August 10th, 2017 as a trainee. So uh, basically the fire department hired me and they put me through EMT school. They got me my fire one, fire two, hazmat ops, hazmat awareness. Um, and then I was able to, from then jump into the academy and uh, here I am now. So I've been on for five years and I love every minute of it. Best job in the world. Um, let's see. I've been at station 16, uh, the old station 16 for about two years. And then we moved into this nice new station that you guys are seeing right now. We have truck one at station 16. Uh, the main reason why we have truck one is ours is getting painted right now. So we'll have a brand new truck. So that's going to be awesome. Just something to add to the community in the area. So that's why they're, you guys are utilizing this one right now. Yep. So basic, just like the pumper, captain seat uh, over there, driver's seat. Um, nothing different except for we have our aerial ladder up top. Our back end is set up different too. So we can fit three people back there if need be. We also, with this station, we also run, uh, our truck runs uh, medical calls with the ambulance. So it's always nice to rotate. Rotary saw, chainsaw, if you have to get on roof, more tools. Uh, basically, this is like, think of the truck as a big toolbox. This is pretty cool. Here's our uh, ventilation fan that's electric. electric. Yep. Wheel chocks. Wheel chocks. More, More tools. Halligan axe. Whoa. So, then describe what this can do. This right here, the glass master. So this is going to cut. So if we got a car wreck and we need to do extrication, we can actually make a. Go a, here to the brush truck and show them kind of. We can actually make a, a cut into here, and it actually works very great. Uh, so it would basically uh, go down, vertical, then horizontal, and we'd be able to peel back the uh, windshield. All right, so moving alongside, we have our driver's gear. This is where our driver stores his gear since he doesn't have a spot up front. This is gonna allow us to access the aerial to get up top. We get on the turn table. Yep. So we're gonna raise the ladder. Mm-hmm. So here goes our uh, ladders. We have the 35, the 20 foot, we have the 16. We have more, uh, more pike poles. Uh, pretty much, holes. yep, pretty much everything we need. It varies from six foot to 12 foot. So, all the sizes we need. All right, we this one? all right, so we have all our extinguishers. Main one we use, we utilize a lot is our water cannon from small, tiny house fires in the kitchen, uh, brush fires, trash fires. Yep. Pretty much a, a do all. You. All right, so cooler for water and go on fires. We showed them the ice earlier. So yep, yep. Definitely fill that out. The gas one. This is our gas powered fan. This is probably the one we utilize the most right here. All right, what do we have here? All right, so right here we have our writ section. So if the truck comes on scene or whoever's on scene that's established writ, uh, they're gonna take this pack with them and uh, God forbid, but if something happens to a firefighter and they go down, they go in and they're able to uh, give him uh, excess air. Uh, the buddy breathe, buddy connection right here, yep. or uh, actually hook them up. So, and all our air packs also have 
uh, buddy connection to it that we could uh, um, hook them up and we could both show share air. And then all these fancy little departments are here. We have more bottles. Yeah, just like we showed them on the pumper. Yep. Just ran two house fires and we went through all of them. Four so spots right there. So we check those every morning, right? Every morning. You want to make sure you have enough air always. All right, well, we got it in this compartment above. Here. More tools. Like I said, this is like a big toolbox. A rolling toolbox. All right, so what's this tarp used for? Okay, so uh, we use uh, the tarp is utilized for in house fires, you know, after we do put water in, um, you know, in someone's house, we try to protect uh, their valuables and their belongings. So one of the things we could do before we do overhaul is actually uh, get this salvage, tarp. Right? Yeah, so we, we salvage and we, we go ahead and we uh, cover up, you know, the stuff that they don't want to get ruined. And when more. it comes down to it, it's stuff that we would want protected. Exactly. If we had a fire at our house as well. So yes. we're trying to do our best to salvage someone's valuables, especially pictures and mm -hmm. whatnot. Pictures and yeah, that's probably a main one. And you know, this is someone's worst day. So we try to make it a little bit better. Yeah. All right, here's something else we wanted to show you. Toilet paper, TP. Never leave home without it. Hey, I've been on house fires where I've seen people have to go. When you gotta go, you gotta go. So, that's what it is. Real quick, we have this on, on our ambulance, on uh, our chief's car, truck, pumpers, supply event. Like uh, Captain was talking earlier about cancer prevention the fumes and uh, the exhaust that we breathe in from this, um, it's not good for us. So this uh, sucks it all up and takes it in the outside. Wow. Wood chocks. All right, guys, I always like to screw around like that, especially that one. Now, here we Mr. go, what do we, got here? we got cribbing and wheel chocks. Cribbing, wheel chocks, extra batteries for what we're about to show you. Uh, like I said, we alternate calls, medical calls. So here's their airway bag, medical bag, their monitors on the other side. Okay, so cribbing is used at car wrecks so we can stabilize the vehicle. Correct? Yes, okay. yes. So that's that's good for people to know. Very important, during car, during car wrecks, we have uh, our spreaders, cutters, and uh, this is basically, as you might know them, the Jaws of Life. Um, basically, it's going to get us quicker access to the patient if need be. Um, and then if the battery goes out, these are nice. These are battery powered. We have our extra spare batteries. All right, so right here I got the cutters. And we check these every morning too. All right, as Arturo talked about, there's the Jaws of Life. It does the same thing as the spreaders. It opens and pinches. And this right here is a ram. So it, it spreads out big posts so you can put it against a dash and spread the dash off someone's legs in, in a pretty good car wreck there. So as you can see, the captain side is pretty similar to the pumper that we showed you earlier. Same thing in this truck. Back end's a little different, but they're all pretty similar much similar. Okay, right here we have our brush truck, brush 16, and this is gonna come with us on uh, grass fires. Right now we actually have a, a no burn ban. Uh, so- uh, Because of the wind, right? Yeah, because of the wind, high winds. So if someone does uh, call us in for a brush fire, we are able to take this with us and get better access. So we're holding about 300 gallons right now of water and we can refill at any time, but we're able to go uh, off road where our pumper can't go and uh, be able to put out the fire before it gets out of hand. 90% uh, of the time we're gonna use, utilize the hose reel right here. It's our go-to. Um, you'd be amazed how much little amount of water you need to actually put out a, a brush fire, so. So I know for me, I've used uh, leaf blowers yeah. to help put out, just yeah. blow the fire back on its where it already burned, Yep. and it, it puts them out 
really well there or rakes just rake it back on itself but water is obviously the best yep yep exactly we also have uh little flaps oh. that we can put out the fire with right here yeah, so pretty much like a rake or just uh -huh. your foot yep and anytime we do put it out with the rake or anything we go into the dead zone the part that's already burned up all right so right here we have medic 17. So this is our ambulance that goes with us. Uh, any medical call we get, like I said, it's gonna be the, uh, the pumper and the ambulance or the truck and the ambulance. Why uh, are the pumper and the truck coming in Kansas City, Kansas? Okay, so uh, basically on any medical call, we have the pumper, the truck that goes along with the ambulance because we are fortunate to have paramedics on the pumper and the truck. So they're both ALS uh, rigs, um, so you're gonna get a minimum of five people on scene per medical call. And two paramedics. Yes, and a minimum of two paramedics. So that's always nice. So this says EMS, or Medic 10, because this is a spare unit. Yes, While the yes. other one's getting serviced. Ours is getting serviced right now. Uh, so it's this is a reserve one, but it's they're all still set up the same. We have our uh, portable O2 bottles right here. We have our airway bag and suction uh, right here. This is where our paramedic stores uh, their gear, yep. uh, part of their gear. This is side door. Side, side door to enter. We hope you never, we never see you in one of these people. Yes, so we have our monitor set up right here. All right, so we have everything we need. So we have our uh, airway equipment right here. Anything that from a trauma or a car wreck that we get, we have extra stuff over here. IV starter kits right here, which we utilize a lot. Start IV, start IVs. Paramedic usually sits right here. Um, on the cot, we have a portable O2 bottle. We try to carry a blanket, mega mover, and C collar. What's the Mega Mover? The Mega Mover is a strong blanket. So we a lot of times, especially with elderly people or people that are not ambulatory, can't walk, um, we are able to move them safely from the house onto the cot, which is outside, has, using the Mega Mover. Handles on yes, it. Yes, so right. it, has, it has handles, so we could get four to eight people, I think maximum, holding the handle safely, get the patient onto the cot. Yeah. Yeah, so. All right. All right. So moving along right here. What's this thing in the jig here? This is our stair chair. So unlike the Mega Mover, let's say that the patient uh, maybe is, uh, they're ambulatory, but we don't want them to walk and they could actually uh, stand up for us and sit down. We put them on this chair and we're able to uh, two people are able to safely take them. It's got these tracks where we can go downstairs with that mm -hmm. safely. And what's the thing up top in the blue here? Right here, we have our auto pulse. So this is gonna assist us on any cardiac arrest that we have um, after doing compressions before we uh, go to the hospital. It does the compressions. Yes, it will do the compressions for us. All right, what do we got back there show in the back? All right. I've already seen the inside, but here's All right. where we put the patient. Back in. view. We also have our portent medicine, our, our narcs, our narcotics, right in the lock box up there. Right, so that's safely here. tucked away. All right. So, so explain why there's air bottles for firefighting purposes, SCBAs, on an ambulance. Okay, so the reason why we have SCBAs and fire gear on the ambulance is because uh, they go on scene with the pumper or the truck on structure fires. So they will attach themselves to either the pumper or to the truck if they're assigned uh, to the fire. There's two ambulances that get assigned. One's gonna be standby, so they're just gonna pull out all the medical equipment and make sure everyone's okay. And then the other ambulance, the first in ambulance is actually going to attach themselves and go in and actually fight the fire, okay. so. So that's why we have yeah. the SCBAs on there for them. All right, last two compartments, we have uh, our KED, which we don't really util utilize too anyway, much. So yes, not even worth yeah. talking about. We have uh, extra C collars up here, different sizes, ranging from uh, pediatric all the way to adult. Uh, we also have our TAC um, 
uh, our bulletproof vest, helmet in here too. Because our medics will get sent on tactical calls. Yep. Or, you know, when the SWAT teams are being utilized with the police. We yep. So. Mm -hmm. All right, so important bottle right there. All right, here's our main O2. That we utilize inside the ambulance. Yeah, so, so anytime we have our portable O2s that we'll hook the patient on as we're transporting them into the ambulance. Once they're in the ambulance, we hook them up to our main O2. And then once we get to the hospital, we turn it off and take them, uh, put them back on the portable. We also have extra SCBA bottles right here. Um, All right, what do we got up front here? Up Just front, we have where? And then the medic on that side. So, so we have we the have medic. EMT. And uh, yeah, so EMT is driving and our paramedic is uh, sitting in the passenger seat. So Arturo, now that we've shown everyone the ambulance, you've been on five years as they heard you before we gave the truck to Correct, them. correct. How long, if, if someone was in, interested in being on this job, they're on the ambulance most of the time. But, so explain that. Okay, so uh, when you first get on, you're gonna be on the ambulance a uh, minimum of seven times a month. Uh, the rest of that time you get your suppression shift or you get your uh, shift on the truck but you're gonna be spending a lot of time, mainly for the EMTs for the first three years. So for the first three years, I did uh, about seven shifts a month and then it went down like to five. I think right now, even being on five years, I'm down to three, uh, five to three. So um, yeah, so it's, it's nice, you know, you, this is pretty busy because you're gonna run with uh, not only uh, uh, the, the pumper in your uh, territory, but with, with other pumpers in different ter territories. Um, so you're gonna be busy, but you know, you kinda gotta uh, earn your stripes in yeah, a sense. So to speak, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, you can uh, enjoy, like I am right now, being on the pumper Today, most yeah. of the time, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, thanks for the info. So that, that's for anybody that wants to get hired here in Kansas City, Kansas, right? Yep, yep. So uh, right now, uh, paramedics, they um, just because we have a shortage of paramedics, which is why you should apply, is uh, they're spending more time on the ambulance. Uh, so, so I've been on for five years, and I probably, like I said, I'm down to like five or three shifts a month. Uh, paramedics. I know some that have been on for 10 years plus that are still riding. Three uh, to Yeah, yeah, for 10 to 14 years plus, and they, they're still doing three to five. So, uh, so we're- So if people are interested I, in coming to this job, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, yeah. We're also paying for your paramedic now. Yeah, so we're paying for uh, your paramedic. Um, you uh, automatically, you get that, uh, if you're on the job, you get that raise, that uh, what is the 9%? Nine percent. Nine percent raise, and then your college is paid for, which is the best part, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, I agree. Yeah, so, um, and you get to learn more. You get a, your scope of practice on the ambulance is bigger. Um, you just don't have to uh, hand people stuff. You're actually taking initiative and actually diagnosing uh, to an extent the patient before we get them to the hospital, so. All right, we have Battalion 2 here. He just got back. He's now stationed here to cover this area. Highway access is pretty good for him to get anywhere in this district, so that's why he's stationed here. Plus, it's a bigger station, so that, that's good. So, yeah, there's Battalion 2. Show it off for him there, Arturo. Not much to it. But that's what we have. All right, so why is there a new station here in this Turner District and there's a pumper 16 and a truck 17? Well, the reason is because they combined those two small stations, the maintenance on them was getting to be too much. So they thought this study that they did showed that we needed a new station here in this Turner District. It's a pretty big territory. so. We combined both those stations into this one. We added the battalion chief here. There's a brush truck and an ambulance. That is why those two small stations that you, you've seen rolling over me talking now came to, into one. So that's why there's a pumper 16 out of 17. They wanted to keep kind of the tradition of what was in this Turner area. So that's, that's the reason why there.